Welcome to Hemolytic Anemias, a brief overview. We have the following take-home points. Hemolytic anemia is caused by factors intrinsic or extrinsic to the red blood cell. Hemolysis can be due to inherited or acquired causes. The site of hemolysis can be intravascular, extravascular, or both. Hemolytic anemia refers to anemia caused by accelerated red blood cell destruction. It can be caused by intrinsic abnormalities of the red blood cell or by factors extrinsic to or occurring outside the red blood cell. Intrinsic causes are primarily but not always inherited. They include problems associated with the red cell membrane, red cell enzymes, and hemoglobin. Deficiency or dysfunction of membrane proteins include hereditary syndromes such as hereditary spherocytosis, hereditary elliptocytosis, hereditary ovalocytosis, and hereditary stomatocytosis. Acquired membrane abnormalities are caused by paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria or induced by liver disease. Inherited enzyme deficiencies include glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency and pyruvate kinase deficiency. Hereditary defects in hemoglobin include hemoglobinopathies, such as sickle cell disease, and the thalassemias, including beta thalassemia. Factors extrinsic to the red blood cell include immune and non-immune, or mechanical causes. Immune causes can be alloimmune, as occurs with hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. It could be autoimmune, as occurs with autoimmune hemolytic anemia and cold agglutinin disease, or could be mediated by drugs and or medications. Mechanical destruction occurs with microangiopathic hemolytic anemias, including TTP and HUS. They could occur due to intravascular devices or stenotic valves. Mechanical destruction could also occur as a direct action of infectious parasites or bacteria that destroy the red blood cell in the process of infecting it. Hemolysis can be immune-mediated, driven by IgG or IgM antibodies, or the membrane attack complex of the complement system. Hemolysis can occur with direct invasion of microorganisms or release of toxic substances. It can also occur due to microangiopathic hemolysis, in which there is blockage of the microvasculature, such that when red blood cells are, are trying to pass through, they are destroyed. It can also occur when red blood cells spontaneously break apart due to the fragility of the red cell membrane. The site of hemolysis can be intravascular, extravascular, or both. Intravascular hemolysis occurs within blood vessels and is typical of hemolysis due to microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, complement-mediated hemolysis, and enzyme deficiencies like G6PD deficiency. Intravascular red blood cell destruction is typically brisk, and the hemolysis products, which are spilled into the vasculature, are readily measured in the blood. Also, the presence of free hemoglobin in the blood can lead to acute renal failure. Extravascular hemolysis occurs outside the vasculature due to destruction of damaged or complement-coated red blood cells via macrophages of the reticuloendothelial system in the liver, spleen, bone marrow, and lymph nodes. Extravascular hemolysis is typical of membrane disorders such as hereditary spherocytosis. RBC destruction can appear more subtle, especially because hemolysis products are not easily measured in the blood. The chronic hemolysis can lead to splenomegaly. Signs and symptoms depend on whether the hemolysis is acute or chronic. Acute signs and symptoms include anemia, fatigue, pallor, and jaundice. Chronic signs and symptoms include folate deficiency, cholelithiasis, and extramedullary hematopoiesis, which typically presents as splenomegaly. The extent of lab abnormalities depends on where hemolysis is occurring. Both intravascular and extravascular hemolysis present with anemia. The degree of anemia depends on how rapidly the red cells are being removed from the circulation and how well the bone marrow compensates through increased reticulocytosis, 
which is also manifest as an elevated mean corpuscular volume. Lactate dehydrogenase tends to be markedly elevated with intravascular hemolysis, but not as strongly and sometimes not at all elevated with extravascular hemolysis. A similar pattern can be seen with indirect hyperbilirubinemia. In intravascular hemolysis, the haptoglobin is markedly decreased, while in extravascular hemolysis, it can be normal. In summary, hemolytic anemia is caused by factors intrinsic or extrinsic to the red blood cell. Hemolysis can be due to inherited or acquired causes. The site of hemolysis can be intravascular, extravascular, or both intravascular and extravascular. This ends our video on hemolytic anemias, a brief overview.